In 2014, the Writers Guild of America included The Golden Girls in its list of the 101 best written TV series of all time. And although it finished in 1992, the comedic foursome earned new laughs and new fans every year. But why? Hi, I'm Diva Talk, and today we'll be exploring why we love The Golden Girls. It was 1984. NBC was airing its promo event for their new season when an unusual duo stole the show. Selma Diamond and Doris Robert were jokingly pitching the new series of Miami Vice. It's a show that takes place in the most wonderful resort in the world, Miami. This is a show about sitting on the beach. No, 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 no Selma, honey. No, no, no. This show is not called Miami Nice. This is called Miami Vice. Doris, don't do this no, no, to it's me. All right, it's all right, don't worry. The humor is found in Diamond consistently calling the show Miami Nice. The positively received banter between these two older women inspired producers to tap into a demographic routinely ignored by primetime. Legendary writer Susan Harris soon developed the premise. The show centered on four older women sharing a home in Miami. Based on Betty White's runaway success as the neighborhood nymphomaniac on the Mary Tyler Moore show, the similar role of Blanche was offered to her. Rue McClanahan was originally offered the role of Rose for similar reasons. She had played a ditzy but lovable character on Mama's Family. The acerbic Sophia was played by Estelle Getty, who, after working decades, finally had a Broadway breakthrough at 60 with the acclaimed Torch Song trilogy. And the role of Dorothy was described as a B. Arthur type, thanks to her groundbreaking role as Maud. However, B was reluctant to enter the sitcom and she had merit for her concern. Betty and Rue were effectively geared to reprise their previous roles, being offered characters that mirrored their previous defining hits. B and a number of producers became increasingly concerned that this would hurt the show. Would the audience judge the Golden Girls on its own merit or view it as an amateur patchwork of characters already successfully displayed on other hit series? Last minute, Betty and Rue swapped roles in audition. On hearing this, B changed her mind and joined. I hear from Susan Harris on the phone. Will you please, Rue, do us a favor? Could you call B. Arthur? So I called her. I said, why are you turning down the best script that's ever going to come across your desk as long as you live? And she said, Rue, I have no interest in playing Maud and Vivian meet Sue Ann Nivens. I said, that's not the way we're doing it, B. I'm going to play the Sue Ann Nivens vamp, and Betty's going to play the Vivian role. And she said, now that's very interesting. And one of the most iconic sitcoms of all time was born. In its first season alone, it won the Emmy for Outstanding Comedy Series, the Golden Globe for TV Series, Musical or Comedy, and Betty won for Best Lead Actress in a TV Series. The triumphant quality of the show was that it involved older women in comedy, but that didn't mean the comedy was always about them being older women. The humour was situational, their age often irrelevant. They were presented as fashionable, exuberant, youthful, leading active lives. They were the sex in the city before sex in the city, challenging the idea that women over a certain age were disposable. They cut through all demographics, from older women who finally felt like they had a voice, middle-aged viewers who had hope for the future, kids who loved the mischief of the show. And due to its self-aware campness and willingness to deal with marriage equality and the AIDS pandemic, it earned a strong queer following. All four principal characters earned an Emmy Award. There was no weak link. Each role was vital, like four legs of a chair supporting the show. Rue McClanahan's performance as Blanche was a tour de force effort in a pantomime-esque farcical caricature. In the wrong hands, Blanche could have been cold, unrelatable and an accidental villain. However, Rue presented a fully formed creation that was exposed to vulnerability alongside her charisma, giving the character a more defined, multifaceted persona. The charm in Betty's performance was that although she was playing an archetypal ditzy role, she played it from a unique perspective. But she wasn't dumb, she was just terminally naive. As the show developed, the writers developed Rose's eccentric St. Olaf life stories, giving the character a left of centre Monty Python-esque demeanour that gave another angle to the humour. Estelle Getty may have been small in stature, but her comedic timing was giant and this contrast to her physicality only added to her humour. Her lightning quick zingers were often a candid declaration about growing older, an almost rebellious stance in the youth-obsessed MTV years, and her delivery lifted the script to new heights. 
B. Arthur became the backbone to the show, an anchor to the zany madness of the other three characters. Her frustrated reactions to her housemate's campy madcap dispositions added another layer to the punchline. She helped to ground the show and often lengthened the laughs as her reactions would bounce off another character, leading to multiple double takes and comedic expressive gestures that would build a tiny scene into a laugh out loud bonanza. In fact, Ryan Reynolds once pointed out that the dialogue was often very slight, as the real comedy was found upon the reaction shots of these four older women who had perfected physical comedy and expressive reactions. The show continued until 1992, so successful they were invited to perform at the Royal Variety Show, entertaining the British monarchy including the Queen Mum who adored the show. Golden Girls enshrined itself into pop culture combating the ageist view that often shackled women to dull muted parts once they had reached a certain age, and as a result the show became a rebellious antidote to this age-intolerant view. The sitcom wasn't afraid to tackle harrowing subjects. In the first season, the girls get robbed and Rose is left crippled with fear, feeling defenceless without her husband to protect her. Between the laughs there are legitimately heartbreaking scenes, underscoring one of the great terrors of getting older, feeling like a vulnerable target of crime. This was the beauty of the Golden Girls. It wasn't a surface level depiction of senior life. It dealt with real, sometimes difficult topics, but from an angle of comedic pathos. And as a result, the show grew in adoration as it was viewed as a candid betrayal of the lived experiences of women of a certain age. Sophia's friend contemplating suicide due to the relentless loneliness of age, Blanche's terror of menopause as her reflection echoed her own mother's face, Dorothy's crushed heart realising she wasted decades on a man that never really loved her, Rose's heartbreaking conversation with her dead husband, talking to an empty chair as she decides to leave for Miami. This show was a comedy but its backbone was built on truly soul-crushing sadness. And yet, this is also what made the show so endearing. Four older women who created their own chosen family in the third act of their life. Lives scarred by sadness, who proudly stood firm in their survival. Who not only continued, but flourished. And because of this, Golden Girls continues to flourish decades on. A celebratory presentation of growing older. One that acknowledges and yet pushes back at time itself. And for this, I want to say, Thank you for this legendary sitcom. Thank you for continuously being our friend. But what I'd love to know is what's your favourite Golden Girl moment? I'd love to read in the comments section. Hi, I'm Diva Talk and thanks for watching.